Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So as some of you might know, a couple of weeks ago now, I graduated from the University of St. Andrews or, well, you know, we didn't have graduation or anything. So I finished my degree. So now that I've finished my four years at St. Andrews, I finally feel like I know everything that I would have liked to know before I started there. So I decided to make this video to give some advice and some things that I would have liked to know before starting at St. Andrews to potential future students. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. So I studied Spanish at St. Andrews, but how the Scottish system works is that you go to university for four years instead of three in the rest of the UK. But for the first two years, you're allowed to study three subjects. So you apply to study your degree subject, the one that you're the most interested in and think you're gonna wanna study. But then you get to choose two other subjects once you arrive to study on top of that for the first two years. So in my first year, on top of Spanish, which was my degree, I chose to study management and ancient history. And then in my second year, I decided that ancient history wasn't for me. And so I picked up Italian. So when I was applying to universities, I really had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, what I wanted to study. I just knew I liked Spanish and was good at Spanish, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to commit three years to studying only Spanish at an English university. So I felt like the Scottish system really worked a lot better for me personally. And I think a lot of people have found that. So by having, by being able to study two other subjects, it gives you more freedom. So anytime during your first and second year, you can actually switch your degree to one of the other subjects you've been studying or add one of the subjects you've been studying to your degree. So I could have studied Spanish with ancient history, Spanish with management, or I could have swapped Spanish for management completely and dropped Spanish. So it really gives you more freedom to explore subjects and find what you're gonna actually wanna potentially pursue as a career. One thing to keep in mind though, is that you can't add a subject that you pick up in second year to your degree. So what I mean by that is basically in second year, I picked up Italian, but I had to do first year Italian in my second year because I'd never studied Italian before. And so that would put me a year behind if I um, wanted to add Italian to my degree. If I wanted to do Spanish and Italian, I would have had to do an extra year because I was technically in first year Italian, if that makes sense. So if the subject you're really, really interested in, definitely take them in your first year as well as your second year so that if you do wanna end up swapping to them, you don't have to add an extra year to your degree. Before I applied to St. Andrews, I had meetings with one of the representatives from the university at my school. And I told her that my two best subjects were Spanish and maths, and that I would maybe be interested in taking one or both of those. And she informed me that they don't love when you mix arts and sciences so to do a degree in spanish and maths wasn't very common and they didn't really um, approve of it so maybe to pick one or the other however when i got to st andrews i found out that a lot of people actually do that very degree spanish and maths so don't feel constrained to only choosing arts subjects or only choosing science subjects it seems like they really are okay with you mixing between the two if you like both. Okay, so to start with the subjects that I picked up in first and second year, um, I loved ancient history and I found that the teachers were super knowledgeable, they knew what they were talking about. The classes um, were, I believe, oh, how many times a week were they? Four times a week? I believe three lectures and one tutorial. Let me check one second. So I just pulled up my schedule from first year and it looks like I had four lectures for ancient history a week and then one tutorial as well. So the lectures are given to everyone who studies ancient history in first year. So it was about a hundred people, I would say. Um, and then the tutorials are um, split into smaller groups. So I'd say it was about 10 per class. As far as I remember, we spent the first semester focusing on ancient Greece and the second semester focusing on ancient Rome. So you got a good balance of both. So the reason I didn't continue with ancient history is because I found it a little bit too essay heavy for me. Little did I know what I would be in store for later, but we'll come to that. I've never been a really strong essay writer. I've always found it really difficult to analyze texts. Um, it's just not my strong suit. So I found it a bit too difficult, although I loved the subject of ancient history. So I would definitely recommend 
people take ancient history. It's very enjoyable and very interesting. I don't remember a huge amount of what we studied in management. I know there was business things, economics things, um, stuff like that. But it wasn't, there was no essays, it was tests. I believe we had three tests a semester, two or three tests a semester, and they, they were fine. I much prefer that method of assessment to essays personally, but it depends who you are. Um, so yeah, that's management. Okay, on to the main event, Spanish of course. So when you arrive to your first Spanish class as a first year, you are given a placement test to take. So it's a, it's just a worksheet, it's grammar, conjugations, things like that, just to assess where your Spanish speaking abilities are. So the tutors look over these tests and then you get assigned to a group. So it starts from A being the highest group and then goes to G or something. I'm not sure how many groups there were. And you get told which room to go to and who your teacher's gonna be and that's your group for the rest of the year. I never really knew how much difference there was between the groups until I spoke to someone in another group. So I was put in group A and because we were in the highest group, we didn't do anything from the textbook. We didn't do any grammar. We literally spent all class just speaking in Spanish speaking to each other about topics like in the news and day-to-day -day things, just speaking for an hour a day. Whereas apparently, according to people in other groups, they use the textbook a lot more and did grammar exercises to help improve their grammar and vocab and things like that. So it, it does seem to depend a bit um, which group you were in as to how the classes were run, but I'm sure everyone learned the same thing in the end. So these Spanish language classes would run three times a week and then the other two days of the week we would have Spanish literature classes. One of these would be a lecture which would involve the professor giving us background on the book we were reading, telling us what themes we should look into further, things like that. And then the other one was a tutorial where we would um, further discuss themes, things we've seen in the book, etc. You get the gist. So as far as I remember each semester we read four four books and we would have to each do an assignment on all four of the books so we would do one essay we would do two presentations and then we would have to write about one on the exam if I remember correctly it's been four years it's been a while I'm not quite sure but I believe that's how it worked so you will have to cover all four books in some form of examination. Another thing that I found interesting during my degree was that a lot of presentations that we gave weren't marked so the two presentations I just mentioned in Spanish literature weren't marked. So we had to do them. We had to do them to a certain level that they were acceptable, but they weren't marked. You didn't receive any mark for them. Yes, Evie, that's what not being marked means. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, all four of the books that you read in one semester are taught by different professors. So you'll have the first book with one person, second book with another. Um, and it is a bit difficult to get used to because everyone marks differently and teaches differently, but um, they're all really good at their jobs. So it's good to actually experience multiple people because over the course of your degree, you're going to see them all again anyway. So at least you'll have experience with them from first year. So that's pretty much how my first year was, academically speaking. Um, so now we're going to move on to second year. So as I mentioned earlier, in second year, I obviously continued with Spanish. I also continued with management. And then instead of ancient history, I took Italian. So for management, there were a couple of options in second year. There was the regular management module, and then there was a slightly different management module. And I decided to go for the slightly different one since I had already decided that I wasn't going to make management my degree or my joint degree. So I didn't need to take the compulsory management module. So the management module that I took involved being put into groups and creating a business and actually opening and running the business. So it was very different than a regular class, but I cannot stress enough the amount of work that went into it. It's a group project, so everyone knows how those usually go. So just think about that if you're gonna take it, but it is a really cool class. And if you're looking into being an entrepreneur or starting a business, it is really great experience for that. I believe we had to write a couple of essays, maybe three, I can't quite remember. And at the end of the semester, you have to give a big group presentation of how your project went, how you came up with your idea, etc. And that's mainly how they assess you. So for Italian, as I mentioned earlier, I had to take first year Italian in my second year since I had never done it before and I needed to take beginner Italian. 
I loved Italian. Very controversial, but I love grammar, which is why I loved Italian. So Italian was everything that I hoped Spanish would be in a way, but I didn't do beginner Spanish, so I don't know why I thought it was gonna be like that. But anyway, um, yeah, I loved Italian. We learned right from the beginning. The first class I remember was, my name is Hebe, mi chiamo Hebe. <laughs> That's pretty much all I remember. And we had Italian four times a week. And then I can't quite remember how it worked with literature, but I believe we didn't start literature until second semester because obviously in your first semester you literally know no Italian. So in second semester I believe they gave us a whole semester to read one book and study it and have tutorials on it and discuss it etc. So the method of assessment in Italian was tests, grammar tests, vocab tests, that really is the best way to learn a language and test how much you know. So yeah, I had no problem with that and they were great. So second year Spanish, for some reason I don't remember much about my Spanish language classes in second year. I remember my teacher, she was lovely, but I can't remember what we did. I don't know why, very strange. We had Spanish language twice a week and then we had literature twice a week as well. Yeah, so Spanish literature ran pretty much exactly the same as in first year. We read four books, did four assignments. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that in both years for Spanish language, we did have homework to do every night. So every night that you had class, you would be given um, grammar and vocab exercises from your textbook to do. Um, and then at the end of the semester, you would have to hand all of it in and you would receive like a pass fail mark. We also had deberes twice a semester, which was a writing assignment about one of the subjects we discussed in class, usually just about 500 words of Spanish, nothing too taxing. In second semester of my second year of Spanish, there was also an extra module we could take. I'm not sure if we had to take it or not, but I know most people did. And that was a Spanish film module. Um, and that was really interesting and you got to look at Spanish kind of from a different point of view because you were so used to reading books and now we got to watch films. It was very interesting. So that one's fun as well. One more thing I wanted to add is that when I'm referring to my Spanish classes, I was in advanced Spanish. We also offer beginner Spanish at St. Andrews, but I didn't take those classes. Another thing I forgot to mention, I'm forgetting a lot of things, I'm sorry. Um, is that your first and second year marks don't count towards your degree classification. So in first year, you just have to pass, which means getting a seven out of 20, which is, is pretty, pretty easy. And then in second year, you just have to get an 11 out of 20 average overall to get into honors, which is third and fourth year. So it's not too bad, but you the marks themselves don't actually count for anything. Okay, so moving on to third and fourth year, which are very similar, which is why I've combined them into one. So in St. Andrews, every student has to take at least 60 credits per semester to graduate. So in first and second year, my Spanish modules were worth 20 credits, my management ones were 20 credits, ancient history was 20 credits, Italian was 20 credits. So I just took three, one of each. But in third and fourth year, for some reason, the Spanish modules were only worth 15 credits each, which meant I had to take four. So we had one Spanish language module, which was required for every Spanish student to take. And then that meant I had to take three others. So before I started at St. Andrews, I thought there would be a lot of options for modules, like linguistics modules and culture modules about the history of Spanish countries and literature modules, language modules. But I found when I had to pick three modules per semester to take that they were basically all literature modules. I had to take a total of nine extra modules on top of my language modules over my three semesters at St. Andrews in third and fourth year because I studied abroad for one of the semesters. Um, and I, within those nine, only two of them were linguistic and those were the only two linguistics modules offered. So that's something to be aware of if you're not a huge fan of literature and Spanish literature. It is, the Spanish degree at St. Andrews is heavily based in literature. So just be aware of that. The three literature modules each came with four books to read a semester, two essays to write, at least one presentation and maybe an exam, which meant in 11 weeks, I had to read 12 books, write, six essays, do however many presentations and potentially have some exams as well, plus all the work for my Spanish language module. So I just wasn't prepared for that. And what's also really unfortunate is that all of my essays always seem to be due at the same time. So I took three separate li literature modules and each time there was an essay due, I had all three of them due the same day and then all three of them again due the same day the next time. 
which is stressful because you can't always start them early if you haven't started studying the book yet. It's, it's a lot. Another thing to point out about the third and fourth year, actually all four years literature classes, is that they are taught in English. So from first year, the, any literature classes that I mentioned were taught in English. So we would read the books in Spanish, then we would talk about them in English, we would present in English, we would write our essays in English, we would take exams in English. This was kind of baffling to me in my first year when I realized that that was how it was going to be for my entire degree. But that's how St. Andrews do it. So it would have been nice to know before I started. So here I am telling you, your classes are going to be in English. There you go. <laughs> in terms of third and fourth year language classes, they were twice a week, I believe both years. And they are not what you expect of language classes. Much like the first two years, to be honest, there's no grammar worksheets, there's no vocab tests, it's nothing like that. It is mostly conversational practice, so they, the teachers do want us to speak a lot, um, and that is mostly what the classes consist of, so if you're not super comfortable speaking in Spanish, it is hard to adjust, because that's like me, I do not like speaking in Spanish, I can understand perfectly well, read and write perfectly well, but I don't like speaking in Spanish, I don't know why. Um, and so it was it is a difficult adjustment to make but it is good to push you out of your comfort zone and make you speak so obviously yeah the spanish classes the spanish language classes are in spanish it's just literature that are in english and they do run a couple of literature classes in spanish but it will say so on the module handbook when you're signing up for courses whether it's in english or spanish but most are in english so I hope this video helps some people answer some questions you might have about how classes work at St Andrews um, and things like that. There are some amazing teachers in St Andrews, in the Spanish department especially, um, who have really helped me over the last four years and I really appreciate them. So I think I'm going to do a couple more of these St Andrews experience videos, maybe about social life and events and accommodation. Let me know in the comments if there's something you would specifically like to hear about. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see any more, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!